This is Remy, and today we're gonna look at the example Jenkins AWS ECS provided by Ticketfly to run a Jenkins cluster on Amazon EC2 container service. So EC2 container service, also called ECS, is the container management service provided by Amazon, and there are some good features that we want to um, illustrate today. And number one is the ability to auto scale based on your need. So you will see we'll add more instances when we have a traffic, high traffic uh, spike, and we will remove these instances when the spike is over. And this uh, will be automated. The other feature I will review is to uh, the ECS service. So this is the ability to run an application as a service. And for Jenkins, this will translate into having a Jenkins application that will self-recover in case of crash. So we will uh, deploy a stack on AWS and then um, run Jenkins on that stack and uh, simulate a load and experience uh, auto-scaling and auto-healing. And uh, let's, let's start the demo. So first thing I'm going to do is to go into the Docker Hub um, front page for that example. And then uh, there is a link to launch the stack on AWS. So this is a one-click deployment, and that should take care of everything. Uh, you can use the default value. There we go. And I'm deploying into uh, the US East uh, region. I'm clicking next and then create the stack. So this will uh, create a new stack. So the stack has uh, everything. It's completely independent. It uh, comes with a VPC, uh, the network configuration, the subnet, uh, the IAM, so identity configuration, role and security group, and uh, ECS cluster auto scaling group. CloudWatch and uh, um, the instances will be created uh, with the stack as well and Jenkins should be up and running uh, once this is uh, complete. So this is going to take approximately five minutes so I will just pause the video uh, at this time. Okay so coming back to the video the Formation stack was created successfully and now if you click on the outputs tab you should see the Jenkins URL so this is a load balancer URL and Jenkins is uh, started in the ECS container and uh, is registered to the load balancer so the first thing we're gonna do here is to simulate um, um, some load on our Jenkins. So the best way to do this is to run a job that is running all the other jobs that were created when uh, starting Jenkins. And I will um, show you quickly what are these jobs. So we, uh, when we start Jenkins, we have a, a DSL script that is calling the C job. So the C job is actually running a DSL script and that DSL script is creating 10 jobs. And we have five jobs um, for each uh, job. So they are just copy of the same jobs. We have one job that is a JavaScript uh, application. So it's running uh, NPM and it's using a Docker image. And the other one is a similar uh, logic. It's running this time a Java uh, application, a Java build and same thing, it's using a Docker uh, image. And they will both run on the ECS container. And the, the configuration, so the global uh, system configuration for Jenkins is uh, created at runtime. So if you go back to the Docker image and you find the startup script, you will find the, the configuration of this uh, cloud, so Amazon EC2 Container Service Cloud. So uh, the idea here is to provide 
uh, a Jenkins Docker image that has everything so we can uh, see the ECS uh, demo without having to configure or uh, with ha having to do any manual steps. So it's really uh, something that works out of the box. As soon as you deploy the CloudFormation stack, we should be able to experience the, uh, the ECS uh, cluster auto scaling. So what I want to show next is the ECS cluster in uh, Amazon. Um, so in the console, you can find under service uh, compute EC2 container service. And um, there will be a cluster called Jenkins cluster. And at this time I have, uh, so there is one service running that's uh, for Jenkins master. And this is as a service. So if uh, that uh, container is stopping or it's crashing, it will be uh, restarted. Um, and there's a tab called task, and this is where you will see uh, that uh, service running. So there's a Jenkins master, but then you will also see the, the job um, being executed right now on, uh, on Jenkins that will start piling up here. Uh, so at this time, we are at an interesting state where um, the cluster comes with two instances. So this is the, the minimum size that we allocated when we uh, run that CloudFormation script. So it means that uh, we have one instance that is running Jenkins and one instance that is running two jobs. And it translates into uh, the availability in, in CPU and memory is almost close to zero. And so this is the interesting part because we should be able to observe auto scaling. So auto scaling uh, works to um, CloudWatch, CloudWatch and auto scaling group. So if we go to CloudWatch, we will see that we have configured two alarms. And um, this is the alarm that will uh, trigger when Auto scaling, so up or down, is required. Uh, at the moment, both alarms are green, which means the auto scaling it is not needed. But uh, if we give a little bit of time, uh, we should start seeing this uh, alarm scale up green into red. So I'm just going to pause here the video and come back when the alarm is triggered. So uh, it was a brief uh, pause uh, because the alarm here is only uh, waiting for a minute. So the, the CPU reservation was, as you have seen, was 100% uh, on the cluster. And because of that, this alarm is uh, triggered. And what does it mean is that when this alarm is uh, on, it will send a message to the auto scaling group to add two instances. So now if we go to the auto scaling group, so EC2 auto scaling group, we will see that now we have uh, four instances. And if we look at the history, we see that when we started the stack, we uh, started with two instances. And now we have two more instances that were just added. And if you click on the description, you will see that the alarm triggered the policy uh, Jenkins ECS stack cluster scale up. And that was uh, the, the trigger for the auto scaling group to add these two instances. So now I'm gonna just give a little bit of time uh, for the instances to start. And I will uh, come back to the video when the instances will be uh, available for the ECS container. Okay, so back at the video, now we have our instances that are um, started at least. Yeah, uh, one of the, the two instances were started. There is another instance that is currently being added and we're gonna be at a point where we will reach the max capacity of our auto scaling group. Uh, so this is just uh, as a command, this is a good practice to set a maximum number of uh, instances for an auto scaling group because um, 
in case there is a bug in your um, policy, scale-up policy, this will actually prevent uh, creating uh, an unexpected number of high, uh, high number of instances, and that would translate into uh, an expensive bill from uh, AWS. So in our case, we wanted to have a simple demo. Uh, we just wanted to run 10 jobs, so we just set up that limit to five. And uh, just to give you an idea of the cost, uh, this cluster right now would cost approximately 10 cents an hour to, to run uh, using this uh, EC2 micro instances. So now let's go back to the container services. And so in the Jenkins cluster, we'll see that now we have uh, five instances that are registered to it. And um, the number of tasks here is uh, becoming increasingly higher. So that translates into more Jenkins jobs being executed um, on the cluster. So as you can see, uh, Jenkins uh, is getting some load and then the load is being translated into using all the um, ECS instance uh, available, which triggers uh, the CloudWatch alarm to um, to be uh, the scale-up CloudWatch alarm to be triggered, which itself uh, triggers the policy to add more uh, instances, which triggers the container uh, ECS to have more uh, instances available. Uh, so that's how you uh, do auto-scaling. So I'm gonna do a pause here. Actually, let's let's do a quick uh, look at Jenkins here. So you can see the jobs are starting to be processed. Some are already done and um, the, build crew, the build crew will, will, will become um, increasingly um, smaller as all the jobs will be processed, as now we have uh, enough um, enough instances available in our, our cluster to process the, the load. So I'm gonna do a pause here until all the jobs here are complete in, uh, in Jenkins. As you can see, it would be uh, faster now because we have uh, multiple jobs running concurrently. Okay, so now we are completely done with uh, running the Jenkins jobs. So as you can see, all the jobs were executed successfully. All of them were executed on the ECS cluster. Uh, each of these jobs was running into one container task. And uh, we can look at the container service and we will see that at the moment, um, there is only one task running, which is uh, Jenkins master. So the main Jenkins app application and, but we still have like five container instances. So these five container instances were uh, brought uh, by the auto scaling group when we had the high traffic uh, spike. And if you look at uh, CloudWatch at the moment, uh, both alarms, so scale up and down are okay. Uh, which means that at the moment we won't do any uh, change in the size of the uh, auto-scaling group. But uh, what I'm going to show you next is uh, we're going to pause this video, but um, if the CPU reservation is under 50% for 10 minutes, then we will have the scale down policy alarm that will um, be, um, be be kicked off and we will be able to see the scaling down of the instances. So I'm just going to pause it there until this alarm uh, becomes uh, in the alarm state. Okay, so coming back to the CloudWatch uh, dashboard, uh, now we have the, the scale down alarm that is in the alarm state. And that means um, we should start seeing the auto scaling group to have uh, to terminate some instances. So let's go to EC2, auto scaling group. And then you can see that currently we have five instances and the desired number 
of instances has been cut to three by the auto scaling group and then the history uh, we can see that instances are being terminated and now we have three instances so um, if we wait uh, 10 more minutes we will see another uh, one of auto scaling done and it will just um, limit to uh, the minimum which will be two so the idea here is that you get uh, a spike and then you quickly you are able to scale up by adding more instances but then uh, before you terminate these instances you allocate uh, more time uh, just in case you will have another uh, traffic spike that uh, will require to use your instances uh, and the idea is because uh, AWS is billing instances by the hour you don't want to terminate an instance that was uh, started for less than an hour unless you know um, you know 100% sure that you won't use it again but by definition a CI pipeline uh, you can have jobs running um, at any time so be very conservative when you scale down instance and be very uh, aggressive and quick uh, to scale up your instances that's that's how you can uh, get the best of the uh, auto scaling group so now that we have seen uh, auto scaling up and auto scaling down we will look at another feature uh, from uh, the ECS is the service and with a service it means that um, the the task that is uh, executed by the service will be um, recreated in case of outage so what we're going to do next is to simulate a Jenkins outage and one way to do this would be just to terminate the application from uh, the UI so I'll go into the exit uh, service uh, straight from the uh, Jenkins URL and this is a post and I will do the post and I will uh, refresh my load balancer and as you can see uh, it's not coming up Jenkins is uh, is done so now um, I will just pause the video here while the service is uh, coming back okay so it's been approximately um, a minute and uh, Jenkins is, is back up um, and what I want to show you next is the uh, load balancer so the load balancer now is was out of service during the outage and if I refresh it should be back to in service and let's look at the sequence of events in the ECS service so we click on Jenkins cluster we select the service Jenkins master and then look at events um, this is the outage here so when there was an outage the load balancer health check um, failed and the load balancer health check is assessing uh, if the HTTP uh, protocol works on the, the Jenkins uh, server that didn't work so the ELB removed the instance from, from, from uh, the, the list of uh, instances inside the ELB and it notified the ECS service that that instance was uh, not working anymore and then the ECS service um, created another uh, Jenkins master task and then once that Jenkins master task was started it uh, registered that um, new uh, tasks to the ELB and then it was back to uh, a steady state so the whole thing here um, as you can see started at uh, 6.32.40 and was back at um, 6.34.10 so an hour, uh, 1 minute and 30 seconds of outage and uh, the good part here 
is that um, the Jenkins was able to uh, recover by itself. So if you imagine uh, uh, you get into a crash, you get an out of memory exception, you get into a random uh, failure on the on your application, then ECS will uh, through the load balancer will be aware that the application is not responding and will restart a new instance. Uh, other use cases for this will be, uh, and this happens, is AWS outages. And especially if you uh, work on in one availability zone, you might experience this. And having uh, the ability to self-recover will uh, allow you to go through that outage and uh, have your Jenkins uh, being back, uh, back up once the uh, AWS outage is is, is over and it could be an outage uh, for various reasons and could be uh, instances are not working properly and because of that you want to make your application resilient and you would consider Jenkins as a, an application that has to be able to uh, recover um, when, when this happens and ECS uh, would be a good solution for uh, auto healing and as you can see also it's a very good solution for Jenkins uh, because we can scale up and down the number of uh, instances uh, depending, depending on the load that you will have on your um, CI. So that, that's it for today. Uh, and if you are interested in, um, in running this example, you should be able to find all the information uh, from the Docker Hub page and the source code is also included uh, through that page in the in the GitHub uh, public repo under the example number five AWS ECI um, and also all the Jenkins configuration that was um, created when running the instance and um, the interesting part would be uh, the ECS configuration. Thank you.